The Florida Department of Health placed two counties under a mosquito-borne illness alert as five cases of dengue have been reported in Broward in Miami-Dade counties in less than a month. These are what the weekly reports are showing. So in total, there's been 11 cases of locally acquired dengue and they've been reported in the state this year, two in Broward County and nine in Miami-Dade County, along with 204 travel-associated dengue cases. Texas also reported a single case of dengue this year, and the disease has been reported in Hawaii and Arizona in recent years. Dengue fever is a mosquito-borne viral illness that is spread mainly by the Aedes aegyptii mosquito, which is a type of mosquito that is also known to carry several other viruses such as yellow fever, Zika virus, and others. Dengue fever affects millions of people worldwide. Now, due to its painful symptoms, it's actually sometimes referred to as break bone fever. Sounds like something that no one would ever want. Now, with rising global temperatures and increased travel, it's essential to understand dengue, its transmission, how you prevent it, even in places where it hasn't traditionally been prevalent, like the United States. Now, dengue fever, it's prevalent in more than 100 countries, especially in tropical and subtropical regions. So we're talking Southeast Asia, Pacific Islands, the Caribbean, and Central and South America. However, cases have been reported in parts of the United States, primarily in Florida, but also you got Texas, you have Hawaii, and Puerto Rico in particular is where most of the cases are. About 95% of the cases uh, within the United States, it's going to be in Puerto Rico because that Caribbean region with those temperatures year round where it's about 80, 85 degrees, perfect for mosquito breeding. Urbanization, increased travel, and climate change are some factors that contribute to the spread and the emergence of dengue in new areas like the United States or some parts of the United States. Uh, worldwide, an estimated 390 million dengue infections occur annually. And of those, 96 million, so almost 100 million of those, actually produce symptoms, meaning they manifest clinically. So just because you have dengue, you might not even know that you have dengue. It's called subclinical in that instance. But uh, 100 or 96 million out of those 400 million, so about one in four cases will end up presenting clinical manifestations. So dengue fever symptoms typically start four to six days before the bite of an infected mosquito, and it can last up to 10 days. The most common symptom is having a high fever, but other symptoms would include having severe headaches, nausea and vomiting, pain behind the eyes, joint and muscle aches. There can be a rash. Uh, sometimes there's mild bleeding from the nose or from the gums, or it can cause easy bruising. Uh, in cases of severe dengue, which is about one out of every 20 cases, people will have severe dengue. That disease can develop into something called dengue hemorrhagic fever or dengue shock syndrome, which can be a life-threatening illness and that requires immediate medical attention. So if you think you may have dengue fever, it's essential to see a healthcare provider. They're gonna wanna ask you about your travel history, your symptoms, and the diagnosis is gonna be confirmed through blood tests, which is basically comes down to two types of blood tests. One is where it's gonna detect the virus, uh, the other is where it's gonna detect antibodies. So um, if your symptoms started within a week, so seven days or less, you're most likely to be given a PCR test to test for the actual virus. If it's after seven days, you're gonna likely be given a serological test to measure the IgM antibodies. The results of the test can take anywhere from a day to a week. It's not always you know, the quickest uh, turnaround time when it comes to the testing. Uh, unfortunately, there is no specific antiviral treatment to treat dengue. That's the case with a lot of viruses um, and dengue definitely uh, falls into that basket. Um, so the treatment for someone with dengue fever, it's really more focused on preventing and treating the symptoms and any potential complications. But what you're wanna gonna do is if they're dehydrated, give the patient, uh, of course, rest and plenty of fluids. Um, if they have a fever, you can give them acetaminophen. Um, uh, you're gonna wanna avoid aspirin or ibuprofen as they can increase the bleeding risk and people with dengue patients, remember, sometimes people end up having easy bruising or bleeding from the mouth or the gums. So you don't want to make that patient any more prone or more vulnerable 
to having worsening bleeding. In severe cases, hospitalization is necessary to manage and monitor potential complications. Best way to prevent dengue fever in the first place is to protect oneself from mosquito bites. So at this time of year, uh, many people are getting bitten by mosquitoes, uh, myself included, uh, relatives I know. They're, everyone's just being bit right now. Uh, it's just the times that we're in with all this heat, and uh, especially if you uh, live uh, an environment with humidity, they really like that environment close to the the pools, which uh, you know the shallow standing water, which we'll get into a little bit. So the bottom line is you want to avoid being bitten by mosquitoes. So here are three tips to help you prevent being bitten by mosquitoes. Anopheles mosquitoes bite in the evening between 6 to 10 p.m. and in the early morning between 3 a.m. to 5 a.m. So if you have to be outside during these times, wear long sleeves, long pants, covered shoes, wear a hat. Uh, use insect repellent with 20 to 30 percent DEET, D-E-E-T, which is safe to use during pregnancy. Repellents are not recommended for children who are younger than two months, two months of age. Anopheles mosquitoes prefer to lay their eggs in clean, unpolluted water, such as fresh or salt water marshes, grassy ditches, the edges of streams, the edges of rivers, in small temporary rain pools. For example, let's just say you're in Southern California and you get hit by Hurricane Hillary and now you have all these standing pools of water. Well, yeah, that's gonna be breeding grounds for mosquitoes and therefore have to be careful that this could actually um, lead to spread of you know viral illnesses that are related to mosquito-borne diseases. So um, if you are, if you have uh, puddles in your in your front porch, your back porch of standing water, uh, you're definitely gonna wanna eliminate those. Also, the third tip is to keep your doors, your windows, and your screens in good working condition so that they serve as a solid barrier to mosquitoes. Uh, there is a dengue fever vaccine. It's called Dengvaxia, but it's not available everywhere and it's not available for everyone. The FDA approved this vaccine in 2019. The CDC recommends Dengvaxia only for children aged 9 years to 16 years who have laboratory confirmed evidence of a dengue infection and who live in areas of the United States where dengue is common, so where dengue is endemic or regularly occurring. The vaccine requires three doses and it's given six months apart for each dose.